Welcome back to Minneapolis inside a sold out Target Center. This is the NCAA Women's Volleyball Semifinals. Stanford has moved on now a Big Ten rematch. Number seven, Nebraska taking on number three, Illinois to play the number one seeded Cardinals. Back with Karch Kirai, head coach of the U.S. national team. I'm Paul Sunderland, Holly Rowe. will join us momentarily, but we got to go back to the Stanford Cardinal. They were almost perfect against a very, very good BYU team and just dominant blocking at the net. Absolutely dominant. 17 total blocks for Stanford. They are the nation's leading blocking team, but they basically doubled their normal output, and it started with their tough serving. BYU just never able to recover. Congratulations to Coach Olmstead and BYU for a great season, but a very disappointing way to finish. Stanford into the championship match for the 16th time. Will it be Illinois trying to get back for the first time since 2011 against the seven-seeded Nebraska Cornhuskers, who have won five totals in program history, five titles, I should say, and are also the defending champions. But let's talk about Illinois. Much like Stanford, they have three star players at different positions, and this is the semifinals. They've all got to play well. One of the beautiful things about this particular NCAA group of semifinalists is we have four outside hitters who made the All-American team and four, each one of them is leading their team. Jacqueline Quaid for Illinois has had a, what even the opposing coach, Coach Cook would say, is a player of the year type season. She hits from all over the court, lot, runs lots of different routes to different locations and she's been phenomenal. And all, all those touches going to her are coming from Jordan Poulter, one of the top setters in the country, another first-team All-American. And then Ali Bastianelli having a, phen a phenomenal season, especially when it comes to blocking, but very much improved on her offensive game, too. Then they will have to deal with a player who has built a reputation and a resume that is certainly close to unmatched, and that is All-American Michaela Fecky, the outside attacker for Nebraska, number two in red. Well, they used to call Reggie Mr. October. She's Miss December. It's absolutely Michaela Fecky time. One of only three freshmen ever to have won the Most Outstanding Player Award in the NCAA Finals. Uh, finals and she's done it twice, looking to take her team to a third final. So who will it be, Illinois or Nebraska moving on? Illinois 32-3 and three on the year they were second. In the Big Ten Conference, Nebraska 28 and 6. They went through a very, very difficult time in October. They finished at 15 and 5 for third in the Big Ten. Let's go over to the third member of our team here in Minneapolis. Let's go over to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, you talk about Michaela Fecky and Kenzie Maloney. They have been here in this situation four times in their career. And when we asked their coach why, he said they are a package deal. They are the team captains of this group. And it was most important when they called a team captains meeting after losing to Illinois. They said it was our rock bottom. But they got the group together and they decided that they had to change their destiny of their season. They did not want it to end like that. And these two team captains have their team in a place that very few have gone before four straight national semifinals. It is exceptional, the leadership of Kenzie Maloney and Michaela Fecky. All right, thank you, Holly. Now let's uh, take a look at the starting lineups. First, for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Hi, I'm Sammy Slaughter. I'm an outside from the defending champs of the University of Nebraska, and this is my team. Nicola and Hames, setter, also known as our QB. Kenzie Maloney, libero, a.k.a. Pippi. Michaela Fecky, outside, our super whacker. Lexi Sun, outside, silent but deadly. Jazz Sweet, right side, sweet to us, but not the other team. Capri Davis, outside, our 1K wonder. Callie Swartzen, block, middle. Lauren Sivrens, middle, but don't get too close. She might bite. Hi, I'm Beth Brentz, Redshirt Junior on the University of Illinois, and this is the Illini Squad. Sporty Jordy, Jordan Poulter, running the show at setter. Megan, MC Hammer Cooney, blocking balls left and right at opposite. Jacqueline prefers Jack to Jackie Quaid, rocking six rotations as outside hitter. Fun Master and Vine Connoisseur, Allison Bastinelli at middle blocker. Fellow Harry Potter and the office lover, Ashton Fleming, running the quick at middle blocker. Morgan O'Brien, our little golden retriever and only Illinois native, at libero. Our Georgia Peach, Caroline Welsh at DS. Our Super Cooper, Taylor T. Cup, Cooper at DS. Set to go, and Nebraska and Illinois will meet for the third time. They split one and one, and both winning on the opponents 
home floor and that win for Illinois was the first win for this senior class including Ali Bastianelli and Jordan Poulter they had lost six in a row to Nebraska until that match in October fourth time the national semifinals for the Illini it is the 15th time for the defending national champion Nebraska Cornhuskers and fourth in a row Illinois the higher seed at the number three overall seed and uh, they will be wearing their home whites. Nebraska to serve first, and it will be in rotation number one, Nicklin Hames, the 5'10 freshman, the number one setting recruit in the country last year out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Bears repeating as we get ready for the start of semifinal number two. The first freshman ever to start at the setting position for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, and we're underway. Lexi Sun going off speed and finding some floor. Lexi Sun, 6'2", sophomore out of Encinitas, California, was all Big 12 and an honorable mention All-American last year for the University of Texas. Her transfer to Lincoln made a lot of headlines in the offseason. Hames again. That's going to be a net violation. That is called against Illinois. Megan Cooney, the 6'4 sophomore out of Topeka, Kansas, plays the opposite. The right side position there she is made the net violation. So a quick start for Nebraska. What are you looking for early in this contest? The third time, Karch, these two teams have met. Well, one of the things Illinois coach Thomas talked about was not giving up runs of points. So it's critical to do that against the best defensive team in the country in Nebraska. Nice swing down the line and the first of what Illinois fans hope will be many kills for number seven, Jacqueline Quaid. There is Chris Thomas in his second year with the Illini. He was an assistant at Nebraska for four years and on the bench, along with his wife, Jen Thomas, who was an assistant also at Nebraska for the 2015 championship. He has done a marvelous job in his first stint as a head coach. Capri Davis, number nine in red for Nebraska, off the top of the block and will immediately go to the sideline. Explain that, Karch. This is very unusual rotating or platooning in that one rotation. Yeah, because Stanford has other players who stay on the court full time, like their setter, Nicklin Hames, Michaela Fecky, and Lexi Sun as outsides, so they can use their subs more in a particular situation. And that's where Capri Davis comes in to help them just when she's in left front to get the kill, and then she checks right back out of the game. Chance here for Jazz Sweet, who's really come on throughout the course of this tournament. Number 12 in red with a kill. For Nebraska, they have yet to lose a set in the tournament. 3-0 over Hostra, and then a good team out of the SEC, also 3-0 against Missouri, and then surprisingly easy against Kentucky, and then took out the University of Oregon. Right here in Minneapolis last week. Nice dig by Lexi Sun. Becky forced to just keep that ball in play. Maloney with a pancake. Nice set. Becky choosing to go off speed. Back to Quaid again. And off the block and out of bounds. Nice swing by Jacqueline Quaid, 6'2 junior out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. That's the kind of swing we've seen McKaylee and Michaela Fecky take high off the hands and it bounces into the third row. Really tough to track down as a defender. John Cook now in his 19th season. The defending national champions. And that's going to be a double contact called against Hames. You can see Illinois targeting Lexi Sun a lot. This is the first year where she's being left in. Didn't get to do that at Texas, but they're leaving her on the court full time. So she's getting exposed in the service receive formation. She's probably the least efficient of those receivers on the court, so they want to get her the ball a lot. Not Kenzie Maloney, part of that package deal that has gotten Nebraska to four straight semifinals. Michaela Fecky with a block on the outside, working against Bastianelli on the slide. And Fecky is tough. Blocking, the, the Coach Cook says they'll often leave their blockers one-on-one -on, -one on that slide. They got a lot of trust in Fecky. Bastianelli comes right back and off the edge of the block and down for 
number five the 6 3 senior out of Marysville Michigan a third team All American this year and her offense has really improved year by year by year she had a torn labrum as a freshman and she blamed her technique in large part because of that problem and has really come on as a good offensive middle blocker as well always was very good at the defensive end good set to Fecky on the outside bringing a heavy arm into the deep cross court corner. That's the howitzer we know from Fecky, and you were talking about Bastianelli. She said she had to learn new mechanics after those shoulder issues. Now uses a throwing mechanic, and her shoulder doesn't hurt anymore, but definitely struggled through some issues. That's a very common injury in, a, in an overhead sport like volleyball. Fecky having a big tournament so far, hitting 430. Fecky again off the top of the block. Quaid was there. Must misjudge that play. Maybe some early nerves. And just flailed one arm at it instead of two. Got to put out a whole platform on that. Even though she made a poor read, she could have made up and gotten that ball high in the middle of the court. Nebraska with the early lead, 7-4. to four. And that ball served just out of bounds. I thought... Uh, John Dunning in between matches, uh, three times a national champion at Stanford, made a really interesting point. This is a very different team for Nebraska. Eight new faces, but some of the keys have been to the NCAA semifinals now four years in a row. For Illinois, this is a very, very different cat as far as the size of the stage. Quaid ripping out of the backcourt. Nice play defensively and in transition for the Illini. This is the fastest Vic that is backcourt quick that you'll find in women's volleyball. Barely out of the setter's hands. There's not one blocker in front of Jacqueline Quaid. That is not well executed on defense by Nebraska. They're going to have to stay aware of where Quaid is on the court at all times. Through the block and down. Number eight on the outside, Beth Prince, 6'3", redshirt junior out of Avon, Indiana. Put away match point against Wisconsin at home in Champaign-Urbana. The road for Illinois easily over Eastern Michigan, then beat a good Louisville team, swept Marquette, and then beat Wisconsin three sets to one to advance. Fecky again. Nice read by Quaid. Back-to-back -back digs, a little miscommunication. Nice set. Prince looking for the line, but that ball was into the antenna immediately out of bounds by Beth Prince, number eight in white for Illinois. Let's go down to Holly for more on Jacqueline Quaid. Well, you said they have to keep track of where Jacqueline Quaid is hitting from, and that is a huge challenge because she hits from all over. She's one of the most versatile arms in the sport, hitting from six or seven different locations on the court. So they've got to be aware of where she's coming from. But her and her setter have a great communication and can really connect wherever they need her to be on the court. It makes it hard for them to find her. Thank you, Holly. Really good serve by Michaela Fecky to start this point and then cracking out of the back row. That's when you don't want to take to the face, Paul. That can, we've had concussions oh. over far less than that. Fecky will hit that ball so hard back to her left, to our right as we watch that. A cross body shot, and she puts a lot of wood on that. Combination play, nicely done. Blocked out of the middle, number 12, Ashlyn Fleming, 6'4", junior out of San Jose, California, and a very important addition for the Fighting Illini. They had kind of a void as a middle blocker, but she transferred from Pacific, where Chris Thomas, Thomas uh, coincidentally played his college volleyball several years ago. Nicely done by Illinois. Fecky, perfect pass. Nice up. Doug, and for the kill by Quaid. Much better positioning that time by Quaid, and she did not have a lot of time to react. So most of that is just picking a better location on the court to get a chance to touch it. Quaid already with three digs, doing a very nice job defensively, getting a little fortunate on the point scoring. Another dig, good read into the cross-court corner. Dug by Poulter, but out of the reach that time of Megan Cooney. I'm surprised the middle blocker, Ashlyn Fleming, for Illinois was so surprised by the attack of freshman setter Nicklin Hames for Nebraska. She had no choice but to put that ball over the net.
Here is Haley Densberger, 5'9", sophomore out of Malcolm, Nebraska, on to serve. Nice rip into the cross court. Kept alive by Lexi Sun. Fleming off the edge of the block, and that's going to be a net violation called against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Illinois at 32 and 3 on the year, Nebraska 28 and 6. And Nebraska went through a stretch where they lost four out of five, five out of seven, if I'm not mistaken, Karch, in mid to late October. And that was a real challenge and a very, very difficult time for this Nebraska team. Yeah, Coach Cook talked about it. He just said, look, he started questioning everything. Are we training too much? Are we not training enough? Are we training enough individually? Do we need more teamwork? It's very rare, and those were all against quality teams for the Big Ten, but it still brought in doubts. And eventually, uh, the, the match that turned it around was when they were down 2-1 to one and won in five sets at home against Penn State. They haven't looked back. Nicklin Hames with a kill on two. Got things started out pretty nicely for Nebraska from the service line and continues to do so. That ball not dug very accurately. Nice swing by Lexi Sun. Kenzie Maloney, you know, if you're a Libero, you get bruised. And she had to go quickly to the sideline, paying the price, and uh, back on the floor immediately for the Cornhuskers. Tough serve, but nicely handled. And Quaid looking for the tap down. <laughs> Illinois fans wanted a lift. Straight to the floor by number seven, Quaid. I don't know if you want to leave Jacqueline Quaid one-on-one -on -one very much. <laughs> that is a losing proposition. Great choice by setter Jordan Poulter. Look at how fast that is. No time, but for one blocker, in that case, Jazz Sweet. But she had no chance against Quaid. Quaid had 25 kills in the regional final win over Wisconsin. Combination play, number 10 in red, Lexi Sun once again. Took a long time for Lexi Sun to overcome, described uh, as an injury when she arrived in Nebraska. And um, it, she was basically shut down for six months before she could really start training regularly with the team. Shank pass. Wade missed that ball straight out of bounds, and now Nebraska goes out to the three-point advantage, 14 to 11. Yeah, each team has a clear target that they want to serve. It's the big arm of Jacqueline Quaid for Illinois and across the net, Lexi Sun, who is just in her first year of playing full-time volleyball. Quaid again, good, hard, high, flat swing. And back to Lexi Sun, it's, it's not that we didn't ask four, five, or six times during the course of the season, but you know, Nebraska, like so many other schools, playing it very close to the vest in terms of injury information. And the coaching and medical staff at Nebraska just said, look, it's an undisclosed injury. She was just doing rehab and physical therapy for the first six months that she was in Lincoln. Nice pass by Maloney. Wade. Illinois seems to have found some rhythm, especially at the defensive end. Coming out to Fecky. <laughs> Illinois getting a free ball. Poulter goes quickly on two. Boy, Illinois has had some really good chances. And finally put the ball to the floor. Number one, Jordan Poulter, 6'2", senior out of Aurora, Colorado the co-setter of the year in the Big Ten Conference with Samantha Seliger-Swenson. Yeah, and she's she wasn't as decisive as she could have been on those attacks, but I like her doing that. It takes some pressure off Jacqueline Quaid, who has to carry so much of the offensive load for, for Illinois. Nice little mini run here for Illinois. That ball set tight and missed out of bounds on the tip by Jazz Sweet. Nebraska coaches looking for a touch. They will not use one of their three allotted challenges. Three challenges, ball in or out, ball off a player, net violation, three-meter line violation, service line foot fault, a ball up or down in terms of pancake, or four contacts. Three-nothing run for the Illini. Nice up. Uh oh Ball not, set way too tight 
and Illinois pays the price. But a good run by the Illini to get back into this opening set here in Minneapolis, second semifinal. Who's going to play Stanford? Will it be Nebraska or the Illini? NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage continues with a national championship match. That's coming up Saturday, December 15th at 9 p.m. Eastern time over on ESPN2. For more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, visit NCAA. Dot com. Here is the bracket for you. Stanford, the number one overall seed, into the championship match for the 16th time in their storied history. A three sets to none convincing win over the number four seed, BYU Cougars. Coming out of the timeout, Nebraska leading by one. Quaid again. Nice high flat shot. No question about it. Using the top of the block. Nice kill by Quaid. Paul, one of the things I've been impressed with so far is the serving pressure that Illinois is bringing. When you could tell it's a tough serve when it doesn't cross the net by more than a few inches, very flat, doesn't have a lot of spin on it, and they're being aggressive with it. That one had too much spin. That's a shank pass as they go after number 10, Lexi Sun. But Quaid on one side, Lexi Sun on the other are the main targets, less efficient passers, so the servers want to attack both of them. Plus, it makes their work tougher. If you're having to make the first contact, you're not so free to go and start your approach attack. There's a mistake going to Maloney. She's the second best set passer in the entire country statistically. Yep, big mistake. You've got to get to keep the ball away from Kenzie Maloney, part of that package deal that uh, coach cook calls them the common denominator and they are the two players who've led nebraska to something they've never done before make four straight national semifinals defensive specialist megan miller on to serve and nice play ali bastianelli able to come through with the kill number five in white gonna hit 460 in the regional weekend when they took out wisconsin you see her blocking against Michaela Fecky, or sorry, hitting against Michaela Fecky. That's something Nebraska likes to do, leaves their hitters one-on-one -on -one against the slide. Fecky having to work awfully hard to get after that short tip. Poulter going right side, ripped down the line, but a tough a touch off the edge of the block, Michaela Fecky. So Ashlyn Fleming coming through with the kill. And now it's Illinois leading 18-16. Touch off the edge of the block that time of Michaela Fecky in Nebraska is forced to call a timeout. Illinois on a 7-2 run, and Jacqueline Quay digging her share of balls. Karchin also really good in transition so far. She sure has been. They, they run that backcourt set down the middle. That's one of the six or seven spots or locations on the court that she'll attack. But they just, she and Jordan Poulter have such a good connection between setter and hitter that they don't leave a lot of time. The ball is not in the air very long before she makes contact with her strong arm. No question that she was going to carry a big load and has done so as advertised. ABC has a bowl game doubleheader on Saturday beginning at noon with the Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl between North Carolina A&T and Alcorn State. And then at 3.30, it's the Mitsubishi Motors Las Vegas Bowl between number 21 Fresno State and Arizona State. Both, of course, are streaming live on the ESPN app. Paul, the other interesting thing is Michaela Fecky's taken almost 15 swings, only three kills. Illinois has defended her very well. You see a lot of soft blocks that are coming on their side. Last week, we saw a lot of those going into the fifth row. Like, she just had so much heat on the ball. It was bouncing off the block and out of bounds. Let's go quickly down to the sideline to Holly Rowe, who has more on the All-American setter, Jordan Poulter. Well, guys, you're seeing so many great connections Poulter has with Jacqueline Quaid. You know, she almost thought about transferring from Illinois when they lost their coach, Kevin Hambly, when he took the Stanford job. She kind of was opening her eyes. There was about three-week time period where they were waiting for a new hire, but Chris Thomas got the job, and 
you know, he was an All-American setter at Pacific in 2003. She said, we had a very frank conversation. He said, I think I can make you better. You're telling on some of your sets. She's like, oh, all right, that opened my eyes. If he's going to tell me the truth, I think I can stay and work with him. And he has turned her into a very good All-American setter. Yep, we can make this thing work. And it has certainly all the way to the national semifinals. And he was very familiar with Illinois because he was in charge of scouting for Nebraska as an assistant. So he had been looking for all the little, not only the strengths, but the weaknesses. So he knew them so well, he was able to convince them, look, if you fix these things, you guys could be really good. And here they are in the national semifinals. Free ball coming to Illinois. But really good soft block touches right now by Illinois. Doug on the bick. Lexi Sun into the cross court that time, finding some space inside Fleming. What a good swing by Sun. We've seen her getting stronger and stronger as the season has worn on, gotten over that injury after having to shut things down and having very little activity. Came up with some big kills against Oregon in the regional final last week right here in Minneapolis. She's now four of seven, no errors, hitting a cool 571. Yeah, much more efficient than Fecky. Tied on the overpass, and where are Illinois' blockers? They got to know Hames is in the front row. Timeout called by Illinois. And a nice little mini run by Nebraska to recapture the lead. We'll step aside, second semifinal here in Minneapolis. For enhanced coverage from the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, log on to the ESPN app and check out the Volleyball Championship Data Center. You can follow real-time stats and see extended camera angles, both in addition to what everyone else is seeing at home. Back with Karch Karai and Paul Sunderland, Holly Rowe on the sideline. Illinois back in the NCAA semifinals for the first time since 2011, and Nebraska making it for the 15th time overall, and incredibly the fourth straight. Stanford has moved on. They beat BYU, the number four seed, three sets to none and Stanford into the championship match for the 16th time. Nebraska on a 3-0 run, leading now 19-18. Shank pass. Michaela Fecky, historically one of the best setters in Nebraska history, that's now 44 aces against only 46 errors. Exactly, one of the best servers. She brings a lot of heat. She, Lexi Sun, Kenzie Maloney, Coach Cook gives their bro lots of credit for service pressure also. That ball deflected the fister that time by Lexi Sun out of the reach of Nebraska and a much needed side out for Illinois as Poulter will go back to the line. Working on Fecky. Nice play into the cross court. Beth Prince, number eight in white, able to put the ball to the floor and tied at 20. Good service pressure from Poulter. She's going cross court looking for Fecky. Nice touch by Quaid. Lexi Sun through the block and down. Five kills on eight swings for Sun. This is about as confident as I've seen her all season, Paul. Taking some swings, finding the daylight between blockers better than she was a month or two ago as she's getting more fit and getting more used to being part of the Husker program. Here is Densberger. Sun's numbers way up in the tournament compared to the regular season. Nice dig by Fecky, but Nebraska not there to follow up. Let's go over to Holly. Well, 
you see Lexi Sun really coming alive for Nebraska. And, you know, it's interesting. She was the best player in America, went to Texas, decided to transfer. And when she came in, the conversation with John Cook was, we have got to reinvent you as a player. If you want to be a six rotation player and play along the back row, you're not good enough to play for us like that right now. And she, to her credit, was very humble, said, I'll do whatever it takes. They have broken her, break, broken her game down from scratch. And now she is that six rotation player and playing very well for Nebraska. Jacqueline Quaid hammering down the line, and here comes Illinois. Now taking the 22-21 advantage. Timeout called by Nebraska. John Cook and the Cornhuskers went on a 3-0 run to recapture the lead, but then Illinois has answered right back. Mentioned that uh, Nebraska their last loss was to Illinois. Since then, they've won 12 straight. And seven of those, the last seven, have been all in sweeps. As mentioned, they haven't lost a set yet in the tournament. Illinois just looked like they've settled down to you, Karch. A lot of ball handling errors at the very beginning of this all-important first set. Yeah, earlier, Jordan Poulter was having a little trouble locating, put her, her hitters too close and gave away some free points. But she's given them some space now and continues to connect with Kit Quaid. That's the... <coughs> Excuse me. The biggest connection that has led them to a 17 and three really strong second place finish in the Big Ten. Look at Jacqueline Quaid. Eight kills on 19 swings, only been stopped once. ESPN has a triple header of bowls on Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. New Mexico Bowl, North Texas versus Utah State. Then at 5.30, the Raycom Media Camellia Bowl. And then concluding the evening, 9 p.m., the R&L Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Middle Tennessee versus Appalachian State College football bowls all day Saturday on ESPN. National championship match will be at 9 Eastern on ESPN2. Be sure and join us on Saturday. Stanford against <laughs> Illinois or Nebraska. Paul, how about this crowd? Remember, a lot of these people were probably hoping Minnesota would be playing in this match. Had the way set up for them, but lost in the regional semis to Oregon. I'm having trouble finding any empty seats. There this aren't is any. Awesome. They, they were sell out 18,000 plus. Fantastic. And they were selling standing room only, and Saturday is already sold out. Not the person you want to serve, Kenzie Maloney. Drip into the cross court, dug nicely by O'Brien. Sun again. Did she get a piece of the block? No. Missed it. Out of bounds. Now Illinois extending their lead late. Two points away from the first set. What a nice up <coughs> cross court by Morgan O'Brien, the bro, the libero for Illinois. Reading in just inside that inside hand. And another nice up. Plenty of time for Jordan Poulter to get there. Back to Fecky, maybe in the pipe. No to Lexi Sun, and also missed it out of bounds. Back-to-back -back turns down the line, hit wide, and now it's three set points for Illinois. Lexi Sun again, nice dig in the cross-court corner. Lexi Sun hammering down away from O'Brien. One set point saved. Illinois has three hitters in the front court. Got to think that the prime target is to set out to their left side, Jacqueline Quaid, the finisher. Perfect pass in system. There it is out to Quaid. Touched off the top of the block, and Fecky can't get there. And Illinois takes the opening set over Nebraska. The first set that Nebraska has lost since November 16th at Purdue. Back and forth, Illinois overcame a pretty shaky start, and Jacqueline Quaid, as expected, was the offensive star. The Illini, one set to none over Nebraska.
obviously familiar with the program and uh, how things are run over there and uh, you know it took a lot with me when I came to Illinois. It just makes me feel a little old because now I'm every week you know I'm going against a former assistant. Part of the luxury of being the Big Ten is having those battles night in and night out. I have a lot of pride in that. Our former coaches that go through our program are playing in these big matches against us. First head coaching job for Chris Thomas in his second season with the Fighting Illini taking on one of his mentors. Very interesting. He and his wife, Jen Thomas, had committed as assistants to stay with Nebraska, but then the Illinois job opened up, and coaching jobs in the Big Ten are as rare as can possibly be, and John Cook said, look, you've got to go for it. Shank pass here, and the opening point goes to Illinois. Illinois, the number three overall seed, taken on Nebraska, meeting for the third time this year, came back to take the opening set 25-22. Yeah, he told, that is Coach Cook, told Thomas, look, you are ready for this. You've, you have been with us long enough, and Thomas learned huge lessons. One of them is to be a really well-rounded team. That's what Nebraska is, and very focused on tough serving, like you're seeing from Jordan Poulter right now. Good blocking, good defense. Defense winning championships. That's a tough serve. A serve right in the seam away from Kenzie Maloney. And Illinois takes the quick 3-0 lead. I don't think John Cook will wait very long to try to sort out his serve receive. Poulter really dangerous from the service line. Yeah, he's trying to get Kenzie Maloney. Uh, he's, he's switching the passing formation to get Lexi Sun over to the left side where they can set her, and there she misses the line again. That's the fourth, third or fourth time this match. I did not think that John Cook would wait very long. Well, the wait is over. An early timeout called by Nebraska in trouble against Illinois. Just moments ago, Hugh McCutcheon, the center of your screen, the head coach for the Minnesota Golden Gophers received his trophy and plaque for being inducted into the International Volleyball Hall of Fame. That happened during a match that his team was gonna play against Purdue. All the plans were made. His mother was flying in from Australia, his sister from London, but he just couldn't leave his team. But a, a great recognition, the sellout crowd got to its feet to uh, recognize the accomplishments of Hugh McCutcheon. Tight set. Slam dink to the floor that time by Beth Prince. And uh, <laughs> Coach Cook and the Illinois staff are wondering, look, how long do you get to hold on to this ball? Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh, that's, yeah, apparently you get to hold on to it a long that time. Long. Exactly <laughs> that long, exactly that long. Do we have a, we, we didn't need a stopwatch on that. I think we needed a sand timer. And that is not something that can be challenged. No. That is a judgment call. And a shank pass here by Lexi Sun in Nebraska, trailing 6 0. John Cook has already used both of his available timeouts. Out of timeouts in this set the rest of the way for the defending national champions. What has turned it around for Illinois because they looked really shaky to start this match as John Cook gets in with Lexi Sun. I think it's the service pressure of Illinois, and it's some unforced errors. Lexi Sun had some good looks at it, but has hit several balls out of bounds. A couple to end the first set, one or two more to start the second, and Jordan Poulter's just um, putting lots of pressure. Nebraska can't find a formation that's allowing them to stop her service run. Chris Thomas, the coach for Illinois, said, look, the team that can avoid giving up runs of points is going to have a huge advantage in this, and that was a big focus for him. Nebraska now bleeding points. And on the season, Nebraska was the top defensive team in the country, holding opponents to an only 136 average, but tonight, Illinois hitting 283, right at about their season average. Well, we've got a timeout. NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage continues with a national championship match this Saturday on the 15th. 9 Eastern time over on ESPN2 for more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship. Visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 championships. Back with USA team head coach Karch Kirai. I'm Paul Sunderland. Let's go over to Holly. 
Well, guys, frustration is, frustration is starting to mount for this Nebraska team. They've called several quick timeouts, and John Cook was really getting on his team right there. He's like, they're ripping off our hands. We're not ripping it off theirs. He really feels like they have settled back, and they are not being aggressive. They're being passive right now. Several mistakes from Lexi's son. Kenzie Maloney actually jumped up in front of her team in that huddle and put her hands to her temples like, start thinking. She's very frustrated with the focus level of this team right now. And Paul, they haven't set McKenzie, uh, sorry, Michaela Fecky in a long time. Oh, touch on that one. I was thinking they might look for Fecky out of the back row just so they could break this service run. Michaela Fecky, Fecky now comes to the net. That's where Nebraska wants her, both for her attack and for her blocking. And Lexi Sun has really got to settle down, both attacking and receiving. She got out to a nearly perfect start, but has now hit three balls out of bounds and been blocked once. Schwarzenbach out of the middle, missed it wide. Wow, big opportunity by the board that time for Nebraska. And that's why you never want to aim for the sideline when you're swinging, Paul. you got to aim three feet in, and then if you miss it a little, you still have a margin for error. Missed it by inches. Carolyn Welsh, 5'8", junior out of Marietta, Georgia. On to serve and play defense for Illinois. Illinois up one set to none. They won the first 25-22. Oh, that was an impatient swing. Good set to the outside, down the line, and missed out of bounds that time by Megan Cooney. I'd much prefer to see somebody use all three contacts on their side. Didn't like that choice by Jazz Sweet to give the ball over easily on the first contact. An example of Nebraska being a little unnerved? Yes, and Sweet's been through plenty as part of these championship teams including last year for Nebraska what a good save that time for Poulter but missed out of bounds down the line by Quaid a rare miscue by number seven in white lots of what we would call unforced errors it's not like the either team is just stuffing uh, getting a lot of stuff blocks like Stanford did with 17 in that first match hitters are just missing the court it's Kenzie, getting a little contagious Kenzie Maloney with the service error. And going back to the line is the transfer again from the University of Pacific, filling a big hole in the Illini starting lineup, Ashlyn Fleming. She had made 61 starts for Pacific. This is a very, very experienced quality transfer. Good pass by Sun, or at least better. Nice off blocker up. Quaid took 22 swings in the opening set. That is a heck of a pace. Ball set a little bit wide, and that time, Michaela Fecky got in the way of Maloney behind her, give the kill to number seven, Quay. And that was off the set from Fleming, who is on the court. One of your middles will usually serve, and the bro can't come in for her. She came in, hit a tough serve. There's another one, and made the set. That ball thumped through the block and down by Michaela Fecky. Megan Miller now on to serve for Nebraska. Getting the serving signals from the sideline. Out to Quaid again. Oh, nice set by Poulter going against the flow. Ball set a little bit tight, but cracked by number 15. Nicely done, Cooney. Oh, I thought she was going to net on that, but you'll see her swing. She stops it. See how her hand stops just before it contacts the net. Good body control on a set that went too close to the net. Cooper now serving for the Illini. Oh, that ball might have been out of bounds. Maloney asking for some help. Free ball coming to Illinois. Ooh. Nice dig by Sun right on the sideline. Quickly again, Jacqueline Quay now with 11 kills for Illinois. And Illinois liking the matchup. Quaid against the smaller blocker, setter Nicklin Hames, rather than against 
The Nebraska opposite Jazz Sweet setting what we call a repeat. They set her twice in a row because of that matchup. 4-1 run now for Illinois. Good block by Bastianelli reading that time on Hames. 11-4 is the advantage for Illinois. And remember, Nebraska's out of timeouts. Got to give huge credit to Illinois bringing so much serving pressure. That is Nebraska's bread and butter, but it's coming at them. The ball crosses the net by only a few inches. They're hitting it hard. There's another one. Through the block and down for Michaela Fecky. So Nebraska's got to serve better. It's one of the cornerstones of their offense. And the Nebraska players always look over to the sideline to get instructions from their head coach on the area that he wants them to attack. Yep, he's signaling area one right there. That is across the net, the left, to Michaela Fecky. So she was aiming for the corner. That She just missed it by a few inches, but that's the zone for her. It would be the deep cross-court corner to her left. That ball just a little bit long and wide for Fecky. And then here, assistant coach Alfie Reft was showing a signal. He gives a number two. But they signal a little differently. They go for seams, and so that was at a seam between players. Lauren Stiverens, the 6'4 sophomore, first team All-American out of Scottsdale, Arizona, getting a rare opportunity because Nebraska has not been passing the ball on target. Looking for the signal again. Area one, again, deep, and that's where Quaid is standing, but missed it. That would be what we'd call the middle of the backcourt, zone six. Lexi Sun looking for the line once again and gets this one just inside the head line. And here are the zones you were talking about, Karch. Yeah, so you started, basically your first server would be in right back, then the next one, two, three, four, five, and six, counterclockwise around the court. So the main signals you'll see from Cook are one, six, or five, the deeper ones. But when he broke out some twos and fours last week, it gave Oregon tons of trouble and disrupted a very uh, potent offense. Overpass. And Lexi Sun able to get that ball to the floor. Number 10 with the stuff block on the overpass. Here comes Nebraska. Illinois won the opening set and then got out to the 7-2, 11-4 lead. And now Nebraska still looking up at a 13-8 deficit. Still going at zone one. Deep cross court, deep left corner. Oh, that's an easy play. Fecky out of the back row. Touched by Bastianelli and Prince, but nobody able to follow up. Nebraska returning the favor. You can see how much better their block and defense gets as soon as they bring service pressure. Fecky now with six kills, make it seven kills on 19 swings. Close to another overpass. Nice play by Densberger. Combination play on the bick, the back row quick. Touch off the block that time and give Quaid another kill. Quaid now with a dozen. She's already taken Karch 30 swings, and it's 14 to 9 in the second. And that ball barely goes up, maybe three or four feet out of Poulter's hands. So little time, you can see there's just about a half a blocker. They're just running with such speed. That ball missed out of bounds by the freshman, Kelly Schwarzenbach. Another hitting error wide. We saw her miss to her left, cross body. That time, missing the other sideline. Six Ooh. balls hit out of bounds by Nebraska. Shank pass here, gonna be a free ball for Illinois. Wow. Quaid out of the back row again, and Nebraska is really out of rhythm right now. They are missing digs. They are missing passes, missing serves. We just haven't seen them over the course of this 12-match winning streak. And they're leaving Quaid alone because of the speed. They're just not getting anybody in. They have no timeouts to make any adjustments. Schwarzenbach, nice, nice dig in the backcourt by who else? Quaid. Did Prince get a piece of the block? No, that missed out of bounds, but Illinois still looking at a very comfortable lead here in the second, 16-10. As a team, Nebraska only hitting 203, Illinois at 281. Yeah, Illinois right at their, or just, just under their season average. 
you wouldn't expect that from the number one defense in the country in Nebraska. Dug by Fecky, but out of bounds. I'll tell you, the combination between Poulter and Quaid on the left side, out of the middle, and yesterday in our meeting with Chris Thomas, he told us that they want Quaid to hit the ball in about six different positions on the court and uh, really getting the job done so far now with 14 kills. And when they have her hitting out of the back court, down the middle of the court, it's and it's that low, there's very little time for the wing blockers of Nebraska to help. Good soft touch again by the Illini. Down the line, dug by Maloney. Nice up by Poulter. Handling the heat. That ball dug right on top of the net and tapped down by number eight, Beth Prince. Look at Illinois, 18 to 10 advantage. John Cook might be hoping that there's a questionable play so he can use a challenge to try to slow things down. Schwarzenbach finally able to get a kill. Nebraska in real trouble here. Lexi Sun has been one of their more effective servers. See if she can launch a few and pull Nebraska back within four or five with a mini run. That's a pretty easy one when it has backspin like that. That's going to be a double contact on Poulter. Easy play to call. Ball transferred from right to left. Double called by the first referee. And a timeout called by Illinois, taking no chances in spite of the fact that they're still up by half a dozen. The interesting thing about that timeout is it gives Nebraska some time to make adjustments. Last year, the storyline for John Cook in Nebraska was, why not us? It was a very different team. And they do a lot of mental work and team work building work in the off season. And their theme this year is brought up by the entire team was, we over me. Everything is always about the team first. Look at that. The crowd has certainly adopted their mantra, but it is being tested right now. You look at the body language for Nebraska, and they look tight and I'm surprised by that and they haven't been controlling the ball enough to get it to Michaela Fecky nearly as much she when she gets two or three kills she energizes this Nebraska team but the last swing she took which was a rocket to her left Jordan Poulter came up with it Fecky's just not been able to be much of an offensive factor in this match so far which is very very unusual let's go over to Holly Rowe well, you're talking about we is greater than me. It's on the back of their shirts. They talk about it all the time with this Nebraska Cornhusker team. But the other thing they changed with their mentality is Michaela Fecky and Kenzie Maloney said when they came in, they had kind of a complaining culture. Kids were complaining about practice, complaining what the coaches would make them do, and they decided they were going to change that. They have changed their mindset. They don't complain about anything. They're grateful. It's gratitude. They're excited to be at practice. And that positive mindset shift mindset shift has really put them into a better frame of mind but they need to shift it now yep. see some tired faces people getting down a little bit on the bench they've got to change their mindset right this minute absolutely holly they got a downshift and put it into overdrive a little bit and get back in this second set working on prince in the cross court off the edge of the block and down nicely done by number eight Beth Prince very quietly, five kills on 16 swings. The offense is all about Quaid, but as a team, very, very efficient so far for Illinois. Yeah, when these two teams split matches, Illinois' offense was running for a total of about 175, so they're over 100 points over that efficiency-wise, handling this defense of Nebraska much better, and it starts by controlling the service pressure of Nebraska. Here's Maloney. Stabbed by Sun. Becky's going to get a swing. Nice up. Jazz sweet down the line. O'Brien with the stab. Nice play, but Illinois 
cannot quite follow through on the chase. Jazz Sweet with a kill off the right side. Her, like Leslie's son, numbers much higher in the NCAA tournament. Nice hustle by number 21, Welch. Tra trying to track down that ball. Shank pass. And Jazz Sweet able to tap that ball down. Ruled that just a sliver of the ball was on top of the net. 19-15. Nebraska is out of timeouts. Illinois has one remaining. Maloney doing a good job of doing really what is the trademark of the Nebraska team. Tough serving, creating themselves some chances and three straight digs. Oh, you've got to call that if you're going to call the Poulter set. Double contact called against Becky, and she knew it right away. Boy, that is a big break for Illinois. They were having some trouble in that rotation. And Fecky's such an experienced player, she had to know that that was a, a risky play. I would have used a different contact than the overhead there. Yeah, so far, really out of the personality for Nebraska. They look unnerved, making very unusual mistakes. Quaid missed that ball out of bounds. No touch, no challenge. Boy, did Illinois let Nebraska off the hook on that play. Remember that one, Paul. If Nebraska comes back and win this set, that was a really easy play to turn into a quality swing. And that serve is missed. A break right back at you by Megan Miller. Still lots of time for Nebraska to come back. But they're going to have to do it with no breaks from a timeout, maybe one from a challenge. Stiverens and Fecky up front. Look at Stiverens' numbers. She's only gotten three sets so far in the match because of the poor passing. Shot into the cross court, deep corner, missed by Fecky. And the lead is 22 to 16. In their loss, Fecky hit only 145 when Illinois was able to go into Nebraska's home gym and notch the win. On the overpass, the easiest kill of the night so far for Quaid, number seven. Two points away from a two sets to none lead over Nebraska. This should be very familiar, very comfortable territory for the Stars of Nebraska, their fourth straight trip to the national semifinals. But they look like the nervous team. Fecky is blocked. Poulter along with Bastianelli. Set points, eight of them for Illinois. Wow, are you shocked by this, Karch? I am shocked. The, I thought the team that would be bringing far more service pressure is Nebraska, but it's Illinois all the way. They're serving grenades across the net. Set point. For the set, Bastianelli down the line. And the fighting Illini have a two sets to none lead over the defending national champions from Nebraska. 25-22 and also win that one easily. Final score of 25 to 16. Five nothing run for Illinois to close out the second set. Let's go down courtside. Holly Rowe with Jordan Poulter. Well, Jordan, your team got off to a little bit of a slow start in set one, but what happened where you guys finally found your rhythm? Yeah, no, I think in any new environment, it takes a little bit to get adjusted. And um, I think once once we got on our serve pass game, I think it turned into a whole different game uh, for us. Our serving and passing has been great. Our passers are working hard out there, keeping us in system. All right, the connection between you and Jacqueline Quaid is just something beautiful to watch. What is it like when you feel that she's in a rhythm and you're getting her the ball? Oh, it's incredible. You always hope that your hitters are on their routes, and I know that Jacqueline's always on her route, so it's easy to find her, and it's it's easy to see the holes, and she's she's able to capitalize on a lot of balls in the front row and the back row. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. What a solid start for Quaid, Poulter, and all of the fighting Illini. A stunning two sets to none lead over Nebraska, and they've made it look easy so far. How will Nebraska adjust? Welcome back to the Twin Cities. First time for these semifinals and finals 
in 30 years. This is the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship. Nebraska trailing Illinois, two sets to none. Illinois loose out on the court. Nebraska nowhere to be seen. John Cook immediately, the head coach, took him into the locker room with Karch Kirai on Paul Sunderland. Well, what do you think Coach Cook's message is as he took Nebraska out of sight so he could talk to him? Well, I think he's got to be stunned at how passively and soft they're playing. This is not the Nebraska we know that has only one loss in the last four years of NCAA right. tournaments combined with uh, Kenzie Maloney and, of course, Michaela Fecky leading the way. So very surprising at how soft they're playing, getting outserved, outpassed, outplayed in every phase. Well, give a lot of credit to Illinois. They are hitting it about their season average, and they're doing a wonderful job defensively. And Jordan Poulter, who we heard from, is really doing a good job keeping her team together, intact, and getting the ball to Quaid an awful lot along with Prince. She sure is, and they just don't give much time to their opponents running a faster offense that often gets only one block in front. And Jacqueline Quaid is so tough, and you can, you just cannot leave her alone as much as Nebraska has. We'll see what adjustments they make. One of the things they could do is just put different blockers in front of her by changing their their first server and spinning spinning the team around. So we'll see what they come out with. Nebraska looks like they're starting the same. They're not changing anything. They still have Nicklin Hames who's ready to be their first server, just as she was in the first set. Quaid picking up right where she left off, 25 kills versus Wisconsin last weekend to advance to the national semifinals, the fourth time ever for Illinois. It's the 15th appearance for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. All Nebraska so far, you mentioned the record. There they are, there are the captains. Michaela Fecky and Kenzie Maloney are 20 and one in the NCAA tournament. You talked about serve and pass, and aces don't tell much of the story, but zero service errors for Illinois and still applying all that pressure to go along with it against Nebraska. Hames to start things off. Third set, must-win situation for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And uh, there's that combination, 20-1 and one in the NCAA tournament. And in the months of November and December, they are a force, 51 and two. Nebraska, though, only passing in system. That is putting their setter in a good spot 45% of the time, less than half the time, far below Nebraska's season average. Quaid is stuffed by Lexi Sun on the outside. That is just the second time Quaid has been blocked in 37 swings. Nebraska four blocks as a team for Illinois, eight. Stanford won their semifinal earlier this evening. Three sets to none over BYU. That ball served out of bounds. And that'll happen, Paul. Nebraska knows they have to bring stronger service pressure, but with it comes maybe a few more errors. And that was their sixth service error. But Nebraska feeling the pressure to hit the serve harder like that. Becky looks to go over the top and missed down the line defensively by Taylor Cooper. Michaela Fecky not having a very Fecky-esque. Is that a word I just created? Fecky-esque? Well, uh, I'll go that with that you, one. That meant you I didn't know like exactly it. What, no, I like that one. She has been so good for them in November and December, her whole career, as her career is now winding down, that this is unusual. There's, it's, there's a good reason why she's won most outstanding player of this tournament twice in the last three years. Well, Becky's numbers so far through the first two sets, she just registered her eighth kill. So the first two sets, she was seven of 25 with three errors hitting about a buck 75, way below her. She was hitting 420 in the tournament coming in. Illinois has done a really good job. Bastianelli, ball still alive. Good cover. That was Poulter on the cover. Nice pursuit by Illinois. 
That was Cooper keeping the ball alive outside to Jazz Sweet. And, Bass, and look at this, Jacqueline Quaid on the outside with a spectacular block, but a lot of credit to K Taylor Cooper, number three, keeping the ball alive. And some of that, Paul, has got to come from the fact that Chris Thomas used to coach for Coach Cook at Nebraska. They talk about how defense is all about attitude and effort. That was all Illinois keeping that play alive. Trying to establish Stiverens and luckily off the top of the tape and down. Been very quiet offensively. But middle blockers are reliant on their teammates for good passing and then the setting choices. But you can see Nicklin Hames, the freshman setter for Nebraska, as soon as she has that pass, she's going to set the middle as much as possible. Illinois has got to take, uh, take note of that and stay, stay more aware. Well, Stiverens is hitting 409 on the year. <laughs> Oops, that's wide. Yeah, tough chance. Blocked by Fecky. Joust coming. Back to Fecky through a seam and down. Have to expect an awful lot of Michaela Fecky here in the third. Yeah, I think it'd be a combination of setting their middles. Somebody like Lawrence Stiverens when they have a good pass, and when not, set as much as they can to Fecky. She's been the inspiration for this team. And that ball drifts out of bounds. Another service error. That's number seven for Nebraska. And for Illinois, they have not missed one serve this entire semifinal and have put a lot of pressure on Nebraska's receivers. And Paul, if you're going to miss one, at least hit it. That, one, that last one was easy. Nice pass by Sun. Becky calling for the ball, off speed over the top. Prince down the line, but just out of bounds. Wow, maybe, maybe a challenge. Prince thought that ball was in. So we will have a challenge ball in or out called by Illinois. Yeah, the linesman close to us. He's looking at his linesman's his partner saying, hmm, I'm second guessing <laughs> myself a little bit. Well, we'll see soon enough. Take another look. This is if, Illinois' first challenge. I don't know if we'll be able to see it behind the block. Oh, that looked in. Yeah, that ball looks oh, in. Oh, man, that's on the line. Yeah, this is going to be overruled. That's a little tougher look. Got to look along that, si that end line or that sideline, sorry. Here we'll get a good look. Yep, yep, yep. Call's going to be overturned. Good use of the challenge by Chris Thomas, the first time head coach in his career after spending several years at Nebraska. You know what I found? I feel like the video challenge has made referees better. They can be a little more assertive and know that if they make a, a wrong call, it'll It'll get corrected, but I generally find them missing less calls now with that system in place. I think it's good for the game that the players are determining the, the call more, the referees less. Stiverin successfully over the top off speed, and Fecky will go back to serve. Illinois, in my opinion, has done a really good job with one of the game's best servers at the line. Fecky has not been able to hurt. Illinois serve receive until right now. <laughs> I was just was setting waiting. it up. She was waiting for you to say something. Well, we've watched Michaela Fecky for a long yeah. time, and she has become such an effective server. And it just uh, credit to Illinois that they've done a good job in this rotation. Yep, and and they're and um, Fecky's favorite serve is cross court. That happens to be to the best passer, Morgan O'Brien, for Illinois. Becky going misses. for a little bit too much and missed it off the top of the tape. Third set, must-win situation for the defending national champion, Nebraska Cornhuskers. They were the seventh seed this year. Came here to Minneapolis, thought they would play Minnesota in the regional final. Oregon had other ideas. Upsetting Minnesota, that ball off the block and out of bounds. Nice play by Ames off of Fleming. Paul, she's having a quiet game, but I like how Nicklin Hames is holding up. The, the only setter of these 
four semifinalists, not to be a first team All-American, the only one to be a freshman, the first starting freshman ever for Nebraska. And she's in a tough spot, but it's really been her passers that have put them in a tough. Fleming coming position. right back. Nice delivery by Poulter. But uh, Nicolin Hames, uh, the only one not to be an All-American. Give it time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there is Hames, five foot ten freshman out of Knoxville, Tennessee. And Coach Cook gives her so much credit for making better choices. She learned you can't get away with things in the Big Ten that you could get away with in club or in high school. So once they got past that five losses in seven matches in October, she has got them rolling. Quaid up into the block, still alive. Oh, Lexi's son blocked what was going to be a free ball and then turned down the line. Bad choice to block that. Just gave the ball back to Illinois. Let's go over to Holly. Well, there's a reason Nicolin Hames is so resilient out there. Her namesake is her great-great-grandmother. Alice Nicolin was one of the few female survivors of an 1890 shipwreck in Queensland, Australia. The Kedda went down, and her great-great-grandmother survived, lived to have a great life, and her mom said, I wanted her to have the name of a woman who knew how to live when things got tough. So Nicolin became, it was a surname, but now it is her first name. Her mom, Christine, said, I'm pretty sure she's the only person in the world named Nicolin. But I uh, love that, that uh, her shipwreck surviving great-great-grandmother has given her a lot of resilience in her namesake. Going to need resiliency now. You mentioned her mother, Chris, was her high school coach and obviously did a very good job. That ball off of Hames. Nice kill by the opposite, Megan Cooney. Cooney's had a nice year. Just under three kills per set, hitting 281 out of Topeka, Kansas. And Nicklin Hames was crashing, almost lost her head on that play. Big arm swing, and that's why you want to get balanced and not running around a lot on defense. Just pick a position and then respond from there. What a tough serve, but just over the end line. That the first, first service error, and it wasn't by much, and it was very clean, flat and clean. <laughs> and if you'd ask, exactly, if you'd ask Coach Thomas, you know, if you'd have been serving this tough and only have one error at this yeah. point, he'd say, no way, we'd probably have at least five or six. Superb performance from the service line by Illinois. And Shank pass working on Quaid. So Michaela Fecky has got an ace in this set, and so does Lexi Sun, and Nebraska leading 11-9. Yeah, remember, Quaid has taken on a lot more responsibilities, including receiving serve. That time, she didn't get out of the way of the ball. It caught her high. Now she steps forward. She's not in the passing formation. Quaid looking for some hands. Missed that. And here comes Nebraska taking advantage of unforced errors by Illinois. Coach Thomas wondering whether to burn a timeout or try to hold off until the media timeout at 15. Perfect pass by O'Brien. Good dig by Hames. And Swede off the edge of the block and down, and the Nebraska run continues. Yep, you can't wait any longer. That was a good call, Karch. The media timeout, if none is called before 15, will come then. But Illinois could wait no longer. Nebraska must win set to keep their hopes alive for another championship. Lead 13 to nine. The Illini faithful getting a little antsy here with Nebraska coming back and leading 13 to nine. A look at some of the numbers. The Aces evening out. Illinois has been absolutely superb. Jacqueline Quaid putting up big numbers cards, but I just checked during the timeout. She's 0 for her last five. Sun now for Nebraska. Michaela Fecky and Nicolin Hames both closing on that ball and neither one able to get a hand under it. Nice off speed that time by Quay. Trying to get a whole stack of pancakes under there, but they didn't have enough butter and syrup. One hand each. The grill was very <laughs> crowded with sausage and bacon. There were bodies flying real close to that. Ficky is rejected by Poulter. Remember, Poulter got her at set point 
in the second and another huge move by Poulter. She's putting her six foot two height, much taller than the average setter, to great use. Getting those hands over and taking away that seam that Fecky likes to attack. The 12th block now for Illinois. A rare service error, just the second for the Illini. Illinois had a marvelous season, 32-3, and 17-3. All their losses coming in the Big Ten Conference. And there is no shame in that. Wisconsin, Illinois, Nebraska, Minnesota, Purdue. Bastianelli off the edge of the block and out of bounds. Bastianelli is the one who's been a little more quiet in this third because of the passing troubles of Illinois. Haven't been able to get her the ball with her improved offense. Four kills, eight swings for Bastianelli. Short serve goes for the ace. Wow, nice placement that time by Quay. She took a little off it. And that's a tough ball to read until it was too late for Sun. Illinois back within one. Sweet down the line away from Prince number eight. Nice swing by Jazz Sweet. Mentioned along with Lexi Sun. Numbers really going up 205 on the year, 273 for her efficiency in the tournament. Probably should have taken a little more line on that play. Once the ball goes outside the sideline, you don't want to give a hitter any line to attack. Nebraska really working on Quaid right now as a receiver. Becky, another tough swing, turns that down the line and gets it past Cooper for the score. Illinois has been giving Fecky more line than I would expect in their defender in the backcourt. Being a little surprised, playing probably too far inside the sideline to make a good play on that. Fecky now in double figures in terms of kills with 10. Ooh. Ball set way too low, and Nebraska was late to it, but Nicklin Hames, how smart was that play by the freshman getting her team out of trouble? You're right, not a great first contact, but she saved it by pushing it. She really, nobody was in any position to take a swing. She was the one who was in best spot. 17-13 is the advantage. Here comes Miller again. Defensive specialist, ball pass tight. Nice dig by Miller down the line, holding her ground, and another tip. Fecky starting to find some rhythm, as is Nebraska at the defensive end. Remember, this Nebraska team on the season was the best defensive team in the country. And here come the defending champions. Timeout called by Illinois. Nebraska leading 18-13. Well, we have a moment. We want to reach out to our dear friend, our lead producer, Drew Irvine is unable to be with us this weekend due to the passing of his brother-in-law, Christian Ovlin. Our thoughts and condolences are with Drew, Ashley, and their entire family at this time. Drew, you were missed, and all of us are extending a hand in our hearts and our prayers right now to you and your entire family in this difficult time. What's turned it around, Karch, for Nebraska? Serving pressure, it's their trademark, it's their hallmark, it's, it's the bedrock that they build their defense on. And they're finally starting to break down the passing, the passers, especially Jacqueline Quaid for Illinois, something they were unable to do enough in the first and second sets. Let's take a look at the numbers. Nebraska, way below their season average of about 270 in the first couple of sets credit Illinois but picking it up to 455 in Illinois going in the other direction two very very good defensive teams when Chris Thomas took over the program at Illinois the message was that we are going to build ourselves like Nebraska did and it starts with defense when he first got there he didn't have enough players to scrimmage so they just would go in the gym and they would work on serving serve receive and defense 
Yep, they with nine players, he said, look, to get to the next level, we're not going to do any blocking. We've got to take care of the fundamentals. And they only got to blocking like five days left in spring training. Becky high up into the block. Ooh. That's going to be a double contact called on Maloney. Pretty good dig that time by Miller in the right back, but a very, very quick back row transition to Quaid. And we've not seen but one or two of those in this set. Lots of success earlier in the match for Illinois on that play. That's an easy serve. That's not what Illinois has been doing. First contact by Hames. Out of the back row again. Nice dig by Miller. Oh, nice up by Maloney. Fecky's getting some very difficult chances out on the left side. Good read by Stiverance. Finally, Fecky got one right in her window and hammered that ball into the cross court. And did you see her cheer? She looked up to the heavens like, I finally got a kill to put that ball away. But Miller keeping that play alive. Let's see if we can see the celebration. Yeah, reaching up. Like, what do I have to do to get the ball to the floor here? Needs a little better set. She had some very tough chances. Outside to Prince, roll shot covered easily by Sun. Tip down the line. Nice cover by Cooper for Illinois. Sun going off speed and the ball's to the floor. What a perfect composed set by Kenzie Maloney. Nebraska leading 20 to 14. And right now, Nicklin Hames is outsetting Jordan Poulter, even as a freshman compared to a senior, just locating her hitters better. We see more off speed, more tipping from Illinois because the sets aren't having the right speed, the right, the right height. Until then, it was a 6-1 run for Michaela Fecky and the Cornhuskers. Illinois still got time, trailing by five. Illinois won the opening set after a slow start, 25-22, and then dominated Nebraska 25-16 in the second. A serve against Miller, trying to cover in front of Fecky. Yeah, Poulter's one of her better serves is cross court. Nebraska with the quick timeout. John Cook, the head coach for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, calls a timeout to talk about serve receive. There is still time. Nebraska trailing two sets to none. Illinois trailing in the third. Looking for what would seemingly be an unlikely sweep for Illinois over Nebraska. Nebraska leading 20 to 16. Michaela Fecky certainly starting to heat things up, Karch, in the third set. Yeah, and it was tough to get much going. You can see that defender for Illinois staying way inside off the sideline, but then they're going to miss plays like that. And that, when they stand, their defender stands 10 feet in from the sideline. Let's go over to Holly Rowe for more on Michaela Fecky. Well, Nebraska has a tradition in their program that they have this big heavyweight looking belt, you know, like a boxer might win if they win a big bout. And it's called the Everyday MF Belt. I'll let you decide what the MF stands for. But in this case, I believe it stands for Michaela Fecky because they peers get to award the belt. The players decide who has had the best every day all week long. And Michaela Fecky is the current holder of the Everyday MF -er Belt. And I think it's perfect because MF Michaela Fecky is having one heck of a match right now. Nice try, Holly. <laughs> nice try. Nice try. Selling but selling but not buying. <laughs> Every day Michaela Fecky, come on. Okay, I, I'm down. I'm down. Fecky in Nebraska back out on the court. Yeah, she said it became a lot more meaningful when the players took over. Yeah awarding when it comes from a peer it's something special when your peers vote you the every day well we'll call it hardest worker Poulter again 
Sun playing pretty conservatively, just turning that ball down the line, but then an unforced error here from Quaid. That was a big miscue for Illinois. When you're trailing Nebraska by four late, you've got to be nearly perfect. A bad second contact that the, took the ball 20 feet off the net, and then a bad third contact under the net. Stiverance. Schwarzenbach has got to put that ball away. And out of bounds, looking for a touch and got one. So a break here for Illinois. It looked like it was going to be a sure score on the overpass, but Cali Schwarzenbach unable to get that ball to the floor against Illinois. Yeah, she's got to put more spice on that. When you get an overpass and you don't have anybody in front of you, just make a hole in the floor with it. Here's Carolyn Welsh. Boy, son, a lot of off speed, very conservative. And that's rejected, but a net violation is going to be called against Nebraska. That was Schwarzenbach. Yeah, son does not look like she's going up prepping to swing hard at all. If I were the Illinois defense, I'd be looking for all off speed right now. Illinois back within three. Got to watch for Fecky out of the back row. Sun again, missed it down the line. Wow, wow. And we saw that in the first set, two or three of those. Timeout called by Nebraska. I'll be stunned if this ball, assuming a halfway decent pass, doesn't go to Michaela Fecky out of the pipe. The middle back row, timeout called by Nebraska. Want to remind everybody, football season, bowl season particularly, double header on Saturday beginning at noon with the Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl. North Carolina A&T taking on Alcorn State, and then at 3.30, it's the Mitsubishi Motors Las Vegas Bowl between Fresno State and Arizona State. Both, of course, streaming live. Stanford earlier in the first semifinal, an easy win over BYU. They're into the finals for the 16th time in their illustrious history and are trying to break the tie with Penn State for the most ever. NCAA titles, both Penn State and Stanford, are sitting on seven. Nebraska has won five. Illinois still looking for their first. 21 to 19. Illinois taking full advantage of some unforced errors by Nebraska. And we're seeing on the screen that comeback that Nebraska had in early September. That was a match that I think set the largest regular season crowd in NCAA history. 14,022 people went to watch that Omaha match, Creighton versus Nebraska. Assistant coach for Illinois, Alfie Reft, former Libero of the U.S. men's national team, really working hard with his receivers and defenders right now along the Illinois sideline. 21 to 19. Going for scene three between the passers away from Maloney. Going at Fecky or Miller. Got it into that proper seam and took Fecky out of the pattern as far as hitting out of the back row. Another good soft touch. Fleming out of the middle. Illinois back within one. Looking for space around Fecky still. Good pass. Still to Sun on the outside. Can't get it to the floor. Dug by O'Brien. Illinois looking for the tie. Quaid. Off the block and off of Fecky. Tied at 21. Did you see how Jordan Poulter was pointing and telling her teammates, set Jacqueline out to that left side? What direction? Maybe this time, Paul, Fecky with well, the back row. I'm surprised there it hasn't it been yet. There it is. And there's the result. No question about the touch. 
I'm surprised Nebraska didn't go to Fecky four serves ago. Well, remember, most of those passes were not in a very good location for that. Finally, they had it. When, you're, when your setter's pushed way over, that's a tougher one to set. Michaela Fecky able to stop the hemorrhaging for a moment. Nebraska on top by one. And not serving Quay down the line. I'm surprised. That is the 10th service error for Nebraska. Fleming back to the line, tied at 22. Nebraska must win this set. Nebraska has half a dozen service errors in this set. Wow. Wow. And you know, Fecky could be available in this. She's coming to Bick. Dug by Poulter. Ball well off the net. Quay taking a whack at it. Covers herself. Nice save. Nebraska must put this ball to the floor. Davis is dug. Davis down the line and out of bounds. And she's in just to make that kind of kill, so they're going to switch back out. Jazz Sweet comes in. That's a tougher play for her to make as a left-hander on the left side. Illinois takes the lead. Wow. I thought there were a couple of other opportunities to go to Fecky there as well. Outside hitters other than Fecky really struggling here. Good pass by Maloney. Schwartz and Bach able to come through with a kill tied at 23. What a clutch pass by Nebraska. That was a tough serve. Absolutely had to have it. Schwarzenbach with a rare kill. Lexi Sun back at the line for the Cornhuskers. Tied at 23. Got a win by two. A chance for Nebraska. One captain to the other. Was there any doubt where that ball was going? Did you hear how loud she was screaming for that ball? <laughs> I did. That's <laughs> Miss December. Set point for Nebraska. Uh-oh. Boy, they're going to get a look at it. On top to Fecky. A net violation called against Illinois, and Nebraska stays alive by taking the third. And Michaela Fecky is the first player over to the other side to gather her team around her. Nebraska wins the third. Clutch play by Michaela Fecky. Back with a fourth set right after this. Nebraska powers their way back into this match with a crucial win in set number three. Well, Cornhusker power has been a standard with this longtime success of the Nebraska volleyball program. It is an analytical program measuring power and physicality in athletes. It was started by Boyd Epley almost 30 years ago, and the football team, all of the Husker sports use it, but volleyball made it their own. They've added the standing vertical jump, the vertical approach, and the 10-yard dash, and the pro agility run. Over the years, they get index points. They try to get 2,000 points by the time that they graduate. The number one player in the, in the history of their program is Kenzie Maloney. As a senior, she has been top in every area, every single time that she's been tested. He said, by far, she's our number one all-time best overall athlete in the program. But it's a wonderful program that they use to measure how athletic they are, how much they're improving, and it has helped Husker Power be very powerful on the court. Maloney, five foot eight, a senior out of Louisville, Kentucky, made the tournament all-star team last year when Nebraska won the championship over Florida. First team all Big Ten, third team All-American this year as voted by the ABCA, the American Volleyball Coaches Association. Jordan Poulter will start things off for Illinois. Nebraska on the board winning the third, 25-23. And Michaela Fecky is really stepping it up, Karch. First couple of sets way below her season average. She hit 389 in the third. Seven kills, 17 swings, just one error. And expect a lot more of Fecky for the rest of this match. Illinois still leading two sets to one. Remember, Illinois and Nebraska split the two regular season meetings.
Right side, Schwarzenbach. That's about as much heat as I've seen from number 25 all season long. Working on Husker power. And she <laughs> should be bringing the heat. There was no block, utter confusion on the Illinois side. So you've got free reign, hit anywhere on the court. Ames, the first server from Nebraska, once again, as she has been through the first three sets. Boy, only one blocker up and a careless play for Nebraska. Wow, that's something that they should have had an opportunity to convert. Megan Cooney taking a very tough swing. Number 15 in white for Illinois. Illinois had a marvelous season. 32 and 3, second place in the Big Ten Conference at 17 and 3. The Big Ten Conference was absolutely the toughest conference in the country. Seven teams into the NCAA tournament, five of those ranked in the top 10 all season long. Nice dig by Maloney. Uh oh. Capri Davis very, very tight to the net. And a couple of ball handling mistakes by the Cornhuskers. Maloney coming up from point blank range. Most of defense is just getting it in a spot where you can get hit by the ball. Nice play by number nine, Capri Davis. Would like to have that one swing back that she missed late in the third, but it turned out not to hurt the Cornhuskers. Maloney now with 11 digs. Tied at two, just underway here in the fourth. Boy, nice rhythm to the outside. That's beautiful offensive volleyball by Poulter outside to Quaid. And you could hear Quaid calling for it. When you have a pass like that and things are lined up, she was saying fast, fast, like she wanted even faster than the normal fast go. No time for the Nebraska middle blockers. Off the block. top of the tape, luckily down to the floor for a service ace. Quaid now with 19 kills on 53 swings. The ace serve for Fleming. And that ball drifts out of bounds. Maloney looking over to head coach John Cook for the serving signals, designating the area of the floor. Coach Cook wants his team to go. Nice dig down the line by Hames. Chased down by Sun, but to no avail. Point possession back to Illinois. Nebraska 28-6 on the year. Went through a very tough patch in October. Righted the ship with a three sets to two win over Penn State. 15-5 and five in the Big Ten. Yeah, that tough patch in October had them all doubting. The middle blocker Stivrens was called Cook at one point, just said, like, what do we have to do? We feel like we're playing not to lose instead of to win. That ball hit out of bounds by Quaid. Level feels like it's dropped a little bit on both sides of the net to start this fourth set. Alfie Rafe coming over to talk to his star outside hitter. Both Poulter and Quaid, first team All-Americans this year. That was announced yesterday. That ball tipped out of bounds. Boy, you could see that coming. Poulter just missed it. Was right there for the six foot two setter. She had it. Defenders were crashing to the middle to defend the middle of the court. She put it toward the sideline. Nobody was around, but it went out. Tied at five. Still must win for Nebraska. That ball might have been going out of bounds. Dug by Miller. Stivrens ripping on the slide. Yeah, you asked Cook before, well, how much do you want to set Laura Stivrens? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of question is that every time? Do you see what she's hitting? Yeah. Yeah. And he looked at me right. like I was born yesterday. <laughs> I said, Paul, we like, <laughs> Paul, she's hitting 425. What do you want? Of course we're going to set her. If they can get her the ball. 
push it. Lucky Ooh. bounce for Illinois, but another hitting air out of bounds for Quaid. And now Nebraska running a couple and on top 7-5 here in the fourth. Those were errors we saw more from Nebraska late in the first, late in the second. Now Quaid with some miscues. Don't want to give many freebies to a team as good as Nebraska. Perfect pass. That ball down inside of Stiverens. Kill off the right side by Bastianelli. Quaid has been really effective so far out of the back row attacking. And that ball served out of bounds. Remember how clean Illinois sheet was early on. Four aces, no errors through the first couple of sets. Well, that has certainly changed. Illinois now with five service errors. They've upped their ace total to seven. But their service pressure was relentless the first yeah. couple of sets. Yeah, and I don't think it was sustainable to serve that tough and keep all of those in. They're coming back down to earth. Sun ripping down the line for the score. That's a better line swing. We want, saw her miss some out of bounds earlier, but this time she swings a good five feet inside the sideline. Sun working on a double-double now. 11 kills, 10 digs. There is Quaid on cue right out of the back row after a perfect pass by O'Brien. Yeah, if I were at Nebraska, I would actually try to serve Quaid there and slow her down mm -hmm. from that very approach. If she has to make the first contact, it's much more difficult to run a pattern that, that quick. Sun off speed, and Nicklin Hames Missed it just out of bounds. A break for Illinois. The Illini back within one. Good short serve. Tied now at nine. Cook's looking up at the scoreboard, wondering if, remember, he called those two early timeouts in the second set to try to stop the bleeding. Sun looking to go high hands and got the touch. Nice high flat swing by number 10, Lexi Sun. Haley Densberger coming on to play defense. Uh, Stiverin's obviously given way. What a pass. Densberger all over that. Sun, very short approach, dug nicely down the line by Illinois. Sun ripping into the cross court, dug by the Libro or Bryan. Another nice up. Good read by Cooper in the right back for Illinois. And over the top of the block and down for Lexi Sun. I sure like it when she mixes in speeds. You saw the hard driven ball she had earlier in that rally really didn't give Illinois a lot of trouble. But if you mix speeds and locations, keep that defense much more off balance take a smart swing and get ahead in the point and then really get a quality opportunity in transition. After the miss serve, Nebraska leading just by one. Schwarzenbach just missed that. It carried long. Unforced error there and so here come the Illini. A lot of unforced errors in this set cart for Nebraska for both teams, quite frankly, tied at 11. Yeah, this is probably the lowest level of yeah. play of the four, four sets so far. Sun cuffing back to the line, gets that to go. It was well in. 
Chris Thomas talking to his blockers, maybe giving Lexi Sun way too much line guards. Well, she just made a really smart shot a couple of plays ago. I don't know if she had to work so hard to make something out of nothing on that. Just as you said, create trouble and get to where you're winning within the rally. And they call that shot out of bounds by Sun. Excuse me. That one is good. On the off speed shot just out of the reach of Quaid. Well, I thought that first swing for uh, Lexi Sun was good. I'm surprised that didn't get a challenge. Good set to the right side. Beth Prince coming through, number eight in white. Really good offense for Illinois. Capri Davis comes back on. This very specialized substitution should be on just for the one swing or one side out in rotation number one. They have to ha like to have a right-hander come in. The hitting shoulder is inside the court. Schwartz and Bach, nice play on the wrist away. She is really an interesting story. When she was just a sophomore in high school, word got out at the easy stop on US <laughs> 77. Farmers used to gather there for cups of coffee, and they said, well, have you heard about this young woman? We hope she, she, she sure goes to Nebraska. They told some of the Nebraska coaches about it. They couldn't really get her name right, but then sorted things out, and now she there she is starring. You don't need a name when you see somebody 6'5", <laughs> <six> right? <laughs> Good set to the, oh, Doug by Maloney, but cannot be controlled. Yeah, that, one on one. That recruiting story is a, so Nebraska. Uh, from the tip comes from a farmer's daughter to a farmer to another farmer to that farmer's daughter, <laughs> who was Danny Busboom Kelly, <laughs> to the head coach, and there she is. Had a fantastic freshman season. Set an all-time record. Did Kelly Schwarzenbach with 170 blocks, all-time record for any freshman in Nebraska history. Tied at 14. Who's going to make a move? Who's going to raise their level? Can Illinois close out Nebraska, or can Nebraska force a fifth set? That ball missed out of bounds long. No touch called. And we've come to a timeout. Teams will head to the sideline. Illinois and Nebraska. Nebraska still in a must-win situation to force a fifth set. Well, in that last Nebraska huddle, John Cook talking to his players and telling them to keep the pressure on Jacqueline Quaid of Illinois. They've been serving her, trying to keep her too occupied to get into a rhythm hitting. He said, we think we're getting to her. She's hitting it out. She's having a hard time. So see them continue to put the pressure on her. Thank you, Holly. But Illinois comes back with a perfect pass. Good threat in the middle. And Poulter with a nice choice going out to Quaid one-on-one. -on -one. Yep, it's in one of the rotations where Quaid does not have to stand in the serve reception formation. Much easier for her to attack when she doesn't have to worry about making the first contact. Good lineup for Illinois. Bastianelli, Quaid, and Poulter. But the service is missed by Cooper. That's a big miss in that situation. Illinois won the first set after a pretty nervous start, 25-22. Easy win here, 25-16 in the second. Then Nebraska must win. Took the third, 25-23. Shank pass and a service winner for Nebraska. Lexi Sun back there in the middle of it. Very nicely done by Megan Miller. Yeah, Miller having success right down the sideline. Defensive specialist at defensive specialist. Wow, and that ball served just out of bounds. Just a little bit long, and John Cook leans back the Nebraska coach and takes a deep breath. He just wants to give his block and defense yep. a chance. Yep. This is the best defense in all of college volleyball. Outside to Fecky again, high up into the block. Good soft touch by Illinois. And there is Quaid out of the back row. On the big, the back row quick in transition. 
And that's what's so nice when Illinois can get Morgan O'Brien there, Libero, to touch the first ball because then Quaid is free to run her offensive pattern that leaves almost no time. Oh, not Boy, a good touch. No, not at all. That ball red, but a good block by Stifferens here to get in front of Quaid. That was a break for Nebraska. It sure was. That should have been an easy call. That is a tough place to hit that ball from because now Quaid is blind. She's looking way to her right. She can't see where the block is. That's why that first touch is so important to put it closer to the net. Off speed, Maloney is there, close to a lift on Sun. There's a good touch. Very nice contact on the dig. A better block. Lexi Sun stuffed by Poulter with some help from Bastianelli. Yeah, Poulter is one of the better blocking setters in the country and it helps to pick a good spot it also helps to be six foot two get your hands way across the net tight pass looking for Stiverens off the edge of the block and down nice play by six foot four sophomore Lauren Stiverens Nineteen eighteen, Densberger on to serve for the Cornhuskers. John Cook signaling fist area six right down the middle. Good pass. Lexi Sun. That's the first ball that she's really cranked on in a long time. Beautiful swing into the deep cross court corner, and it forces a timeout for Illinois. And that's the kind of swing she finished the match against Oregon with in the regional final. Developing more confidence as this season goes along, having gotten a late start with the injury. Lexi Sun now with 15 kills, matching Michaela Fecky for a team high. Timeout called. Nebraska on top 20 to 18. If this match, this semifinal goes five sets, the record so far, Illinois, a perfect 5-0 when they have to go to the 15-point tiebreaker. Nebraska is 2-2 two and two so far on the year. Both teams still on the sideline. This is so big when they come out. ESPN has a triple header of bowls on Saturday. The New Mexico Bowl. Followed at 5.30 by the Raycom Media Camellia Bowl and then wrapping up the night with the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Middle Tennessee taking on Appalachian State College Football Bowls all day Saturday on ESPN. And of course, be sure and join us at 9 o'clock Eastern time for the NCAA championship match. It will either be Illinois or Nebraska taking on the Stanford Cardinal who will be at kind Adriana Fitzmorris, Morgan Hentz, and Catherine Plummer were nearly flawless tonight in a three sets to none win over BYU. There's a quick reminder of the bracket. Stanford was really impressive. And a ways to go in this one. Nebraska with a two point advantage late in the fourth. Densberger. Oh, that ball missed out of bounds badly by Prince. Fleming hitting left side, Prince on the right side, and look for Quaid out of the back row. You called it, Karch. This might be a good time to serve Quaid and maybe even serve her short. They miss her there. Watch the dump. There it is. Boy, you could see it coming. Yep, but you have a freshman middle, a lot of things coming at her, and Callie Schwarzenbach just, Schwarzenbach just couldn't get her eyes to the right things. You never even saw a hand go up in the air to slow that down. Nice pass. 
Chance for Illinois, and they get it. Fleming out of the middle. The transfer for Pacific right on time. Illinois back within one. Well, now the tables are returned. Does Nebraska go to Fecky here out of the back row, Karch? This is one of those rotations they had so much trouble if they can get any kind of pass. But wow. Gordon Poulter lets them off the hook. That was a huge miss by Poulter. There are certain rotations, Paul, especially when Michaela Fecky is in the back row where you really want the serve to go in, even if it's a little easier just because you have the advantage. She can't swing as effectively out of the back row. Shank pass, Hames with the ace. 23-20, Nebraska. Timeout called by Illinois. And the Nebraska fans who travel better than any program <laughs> in volleyball history are starting to get very excited about the possibility of a fifth set. Nebraska led the nation in attendance once again at over 8,000 at the beautiful Devaney Center. All of the Big Ten just does a magnificent job of drawing fans because they win a lot of matches in the Big Ten. Once again, seven teams in the tournament and all season long, half of the top ten was teams from the Big Ten. Five out of the top eight yeah. seeds. Yeah, five out of the top eight seeds. Thank you for that. And taking over from Hawaii, I think it was in 2013, Hawaii had led attendance for over 20 years, but Nebraska has sold out close to 300 straight home matches now. Mentioned that Lexi Sun was tied with Michaela Fecky for the kill lead. Let's take a look at Sun, the Texas transfer. Scoring some really important points for Nebraska here late. Yeah, remember it was near the end of the first game. A few unforced errors. She's generally doing an improved job of making the other team play the ball if she doesn't have a swing on it. Yeah, much cleaner. Really struggled like the rest of the Nebraska Cornhuskers through the first two sets in particularly. But remember, we, sh we saw the numbers from Michaela Fecky in the third. Backs against the wall, facing elimination from this tournament, the last match of her career. She goes 7 of 17 with one air, hits 389, does Fecky. Two points away from forcing a fifth set tiebreaker. Seems like she wants to play one more match. One more. <laughs> Tight pass. Nice up by Maloney. Maloney laid out and jazz sweet into the cross court. Beautiful play by Nicklin Hames. Yes. Maloney with a great play and Hames putting something hittable up. Four set points for Nebraska. Sweet off the top, not yet. Maloney again. Lexi Sun through the block and down. Lexi Sun and Nebraska go on a 7-2 run to close out the fourth. And we're tied at two sets apiece. Nebraska wins the fourth. Once again, facing a must-win situation. They take down Illinois 25-20.
hard way. They were really. Well, we're going five. And you were looking at the stats, Karch, and talking to them, talking to me about them. And Illinois' numbers are trending in the wrong direction as this match has gone along. Yeah. 269 efficiency in the first, 241, 200, and then a meager 156 in the fourth. Every match, every set less efficient than the last. Both of these teams playing in the Big Ten are very experienced at going the distance. Nebraska went five against Creighton. Cart, you talked about that at Penn State, at Wisconsin. Penn State again, that was the big match that they won in early November to really get themselves back on track. And for Illinois, they had a couple of five setters very early, Colorado State and Northern Colorado, then at Purdue. Two and two for Nebraska in five set matches and five and oh for Illinois. Remember, playing to 15, start much more important in the shortened tiebreaker in each team with one additional challenge. Nebraska has yet to use a challenge in this match, so they have four challenges left, and Illinois has three. Wow. And Illinois chooses to get Jacqueline Quaid at the net right off the bat. She's in left front. They want to give her the most front row chances. Huge block back into Lexi Sun's head. Want to give Quaid the most offensive chances in this fifth and abbreviated tiebreaker set. What a block by opposite number 15, Megan Cooney at six foot four, just a sophomore working on Sun. Back to Sun again, going off speed, getting the ball to the floor. This was right before the set started. One of the two captains, Michaela Fecky, telling her teammates, and take a deep breath. I think they listen when she tells them what to do, even when it means breathing. <laughs> she could tell them anything, and they're gonna listen right now. Dug by Fecky, demanding the ball instead outside to Sun. Quaid's first swing of the tiebreaker, dug by Maloney. Back to Quaid. Nice up. What a dig by Nicklin Hames. Oh, the ball is misplayed out of the middle. Fleming was surprised by it and shanked it out of bounds. All errors are magnified in this tiebreaker to 15. Nice dig by Nicklin Hames. 23 double doubles on the year. A new program record for the freshman setter. And another dig. Quaid again, through the block and down. Well, that's not an easy kill for Quaid. The ball's coming from off the net, so she's a little blind to, this, to the blockers as she's looking backward. Still finds the space around the block. 25 kills for Quaid. The next highest is Prince. Well, Ann Cooney with seven apiece. Uh, she does dominate the offense. Kylie Bruder on to serve and misses that. Well, that's a tough situation. That was Bruder's first time on the floor so far in the match. Came in. That's a tough one. Teams will change sides at eight. You do get two team timeouts. Same format in terms of TOs as if the match, or the set, I should say, were played to 25. Nebraska looking cross court, trying to hit zone five. Perfect pass. Maloney ran out of room. Really good offense. Boy, Poulter was beautiful there with the delivery. And she was wise because the Nebraska block was leaning toward their star, their all first team All-American Quaid. You see Michaela Fecky just getting into the play there very late because they were so focused on the ball going to the other sideline. And back to back miss serves. Boy, are those amplified. And going back to the very beginning of this match when Illinois won the first couple of sets, most of the reason that they had the advantage because Chris Thomas's team was magnificent from the service line. 
Nebraska leading by one. Ball over the top and touched in the backcourt by Lexi Sun. Really smart shot over the top. That might have been sailing along, but the best thing to do on this is get two arms on that. Even if it goes straight up, Maloney will be chasing you behind and be able to make a play. Really good location by Bastianelli. Wow. Three missed serves consecutively for Illinois. Wow. And you're seeing the inexperience of Illinois never having played in a None of these players ever having played in a national semis versus so many of the experienced players led by Michaela Fecky and Kenzie Maloney for Nebraska. Prince rolling over the top cannot be kept alive that time defensively by Miller. And now obviously this serve is going to be in the court, but it's probably because of the three previous misses. It's going to be a lollipop here tied at five. Illinois has got to be very happy. Yeah, to absolutely. Be tied five five with three missed serves. Pretty tough serve yeah. after those misses. Gi yeah, given the circumstances, that was pretty oh, tough. Yeah. That ball might have been traveling out of bounds. Maybe the defender thought that there had been touch on the block. And I don't think there was, Karch. I don't think there was either. It was definitely flying out. That oh. went well over the block, and Quaid couldn't get out of the way. Yeah. No, There was absolutely no touch. Way over the top of the block. 6-5, Nebraska leading. What a pass. Nobody up. The delivery by Poulter again. What a save by Jordan Poulter. That ball almost going over the net. And rather than attacking, right there, she could have attacked, but she chose instead to set it behind. set down the line dug too tight Haynes trying to keep the ball alive but cannot and Illinois survives three missed serves to take the 7-6 lead in the fifth and now it's Nebraska not taking care of some plays that are really not that difficult digging the ball right on top of the net there's a better touch got to go to Stiverens no doubt about it in system Go to your All-American middle blocker out of Arizona. And how about the freshman setter, Nicklin Haim, continuing to locate Stiverin so consistently, finding her in her what we would call a hitter's window every time. Stiverin's 8 of 15, no errors, hitting over 500. Teams will change sides after this point. Chance for Nebraska. Big uh -oh. That ball set way too tight. Sun off the top of the block and down. Side change here in the Twin Cities. Nebraska leading eight to seven. Huge swing by Lexi Sun. That's the kind of swing Nebraska's looking for from her. Assertive into the court. High over the block with her big jump. Going right down to the wire here. A timeout called here at the Target Center. And earlier it was the Stanford Cardinal. Tammy Al Alade leading the way. A tremendous defensive performance in the backcourt, but particularly just dominant blocking for the Stanford Cardinal. 17 wow. stuff blocks their we, average we gotta check the record book their average is about three and a half per set that would take them to about 10 in a three set match way over that i've got the record book i'll have it by saturday <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're in i got time i got time i i need the number of blocks in a three set match and i'll, I'll look that up illinois no wins all time versus Stanford, but Nebraska playing them pretty even. 
Stanford, one of the two winningest programs. Seven NCAA titles along with Penn State and Nebraska up to five. Yeah, Nebraska and Stanford are the two teams that have more tournament wins than any other program in history. The NCAA volleyball tournament started back in 1981. USC was the first champion. Stanford has 123 match wins, now 124. Nebraska has 111. Kevin Hambly, second year head coach after leaving Illinois for the Stanford Cardinal, looking pretty relaxed right now. Michaela Fecky really has yet to put her stamp on this fifth set. Overpass. Sun against two blockers, cross court, dumped what by O'Brien. Yeah, what an up by O'Brien. Fecky out of the back row, off the edge of the block and down. Michaela Fecky. That is her first kill so far in the fifth set. She had four for Nebraska in the fourth. 9-7 is the advantage for the defending national champions. Tight set. Dug by Fecky on target. Sun into the cross court. And off the top of the block. What a beautiful swing by Illinois. Yeah, I agree with you, Karchin. You said it earlier. Illinois has got to look up at the board and go, wait a minute, we've missed so many opportunities. We've missed three serves and we're only down by one. Got to be feeling really good about that. Carolina. And they have Quaid now back up to the front row. Fecky soon to follow. Tough serve. Tight wow. for Sun. Wow. That ball has to come up. Absolutely. Lexi Sun is just doing whatever she can to throw it and make some trouble. I'm stunned it made that much trouble for Poulter. Sun now with 18 kills. Fecky with 17. Good serve. Quaid's going to get a look at this. Pretty good set. A good look indeed through the block and down. Clutch set, clutch swing by Illinois. What a set from 30 feet away. Carolyn Wells coming up big for Illinois on that set. Illinois trailing by one. That oh, a serve. What a tough serve by Fleming. Was a rocket. Timeout here for Nebraska. You have two timeouts in this set to only 15. There it is. I thought that might be coming. What a rocket that time by Fleming. Going to go right down to the wire. It was Illinois winning the first two sets. And quite frankly, Karch Kirai dominating Nebraska. And then Nebraska with their backs against the wall win at 25-23. Michaela Fecky with a lot of help from Lexi Sun forced the fifth. And here we are after that serve tied at 10. Really <laughs> perfect timeout on that one. Only because that serve was so tough. You don't want another one just like it to come. You want to give her a minute to think about it. And just like you would ice a free throw shooter, you're icing the server. Wow. Can Fleming come back out and do that again? Remember last year Fleming was playing at the University of Pacific where Chris Thomas was an All-American setter. And she transferred after really a productive couple of years at Pacific to join the Fighting Illini and fill a huge hole in the middle. Bastianelli was there, but Fleming has come on. You're coaching Fleming. Do you tell her to come back and just serve as hard as you can again, or do you dial it back a little bit? I tell her to hit the serve that she's been hitting all season. I don't know if that last one was the serve <laughs> she's been hitting all season. You, you would hope so. <laughs> I don't know if you could hit it that hard and get it in 9 out of 10. That, that would be our goal to get it in about 90% of the time. If you're serving in every time, you're not serving tough enough. But that was an absolute rocket. So if I say hit your serve that you're comfortable with. If that's her serve, 
I'm looking for the note that says she has 147 <laughs> yes, aces. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody can pass that no, thing. No, no, no. Michaela Fecky is an expert passer, and she was absolutely tied in knots. Tied at 10. Yeah, let's keep an eye on Fleming. Let's see how her routine holds up. She takes a breath. She hit a good one, and that's another scoring opportunity for Illinois. Uh-oh. Ball set way too tight. Tipped over the top. Capri Davis snapping over the top of the block, number nine in red. What a clutch kill for Davis. And she's in just to do that in left front. Checks out, did her job. Wow. She missed a couple of those earlier, but that's huge. 11-10, Nebraska. Fecky is back in the left front for the Cornhuskers. Quaid taking a tough swing. Down the line and good. What a rip. Just slashing it down the line. You still got to favor Nebraska. That's two plays where Illinois has been in huge trouble. Their setter's not touching the ball, and they get a good set, and Quaid saves them. But that is not going to cut it over the long haul, the next five or six plays against the nation's best block of D. Tied at 11. Sweet over the top cross court. The platooning of that rotation in the opposite, Capri Davis, and then sophomore Jazz Sweet. 12-11, Nebraska. Quaid. Fecky to extend the lead, missed it out of bounds. Wow, tied at 12. Perfect set. The All-American and two-time most outstanding player of this championship just missed it wide. And a Quaid for Illinois now in the backcourt. If they get an easy dig, look for her on that fast pick. Timeout called by John Cook. I want to talk about all the possible scenarios. Not a timeout. It is a challenge. Thank you, Karch. I would have thought it was a pretty good timeout to talk about Quaid being in the back row. Pretty good timing. <laughs> but the challenge will suffice. So challenging that Fecky's cross-court attack caught a piece of Bastianelli. I wasn't thinking it was that close to the block. That's the Quaid swing. I don't think it was that close to the block. I thought the closer call might have been whether it was in or out cross court on that sideline. But let's see. Well, remember that the video review system now has combined yeah. the one category of touch off the block or in and out. Yeah. So it looks like they're taking a look at both. O'Brien certainly thought it was out of bounds. How big, is, how big is this call? Stiverens, the middle for Nebraska, was calling for a touch, but the two views we've seen uh, have not seen a touch on the on the uh, Illinois middle blocker. And rather unlikely, both Illinois and Nebraska still have three challenges remaining. I'm surprised in a match that has gone on this long. Another look. Let's see. Well, look at look at look at her left pinky. Watch her left pinky. Bastianelli's left pinky. What do you think? Maybe, maybe it got moved. Well, but it has to be. I'm glad I don't have to make this call. It has to be 100% conclusive. The initial ruling was no touch. Ball out of bounds. How big is this? I'm not sure I found that to be conclusive. Well, they've already changed the score on the scoreboard in the arena cart to 13-11. And the Nebraska fans are loving that. It still says 12-all. We have yet to get the official announcement.
Touch off the block. Kill to Fecky. And it is 13-11. Boy, Illinois has really got to dig in right now. That is a tough call. Just saw the left fing uh, little finger of Bastianelli move the slightest amount. And again, the second referee decided that it was absolutely conclusive. Shank pass. Match point for Nebraska. Timeout called by Illinois. Nebraska was down two sets to none earlier this year to a really good team from Creighton in front of 14,000 people. Not the kind of thing you'd wish for. Down two sets to zero. The last match, the last set potentially for the wonderful careers of Michaela Fecky and Kenzie Maloney. And they found a way to pull this out or at least give themselves an opportunity. 14 to 11, first of three match points. And you know, Paul, that's one of the marks of a great team that you're not playing close to your best and you figure out a way to do it. One point away from advancing not even close to Nebraska's best volleyball. Credit Illinois for absolutely much of that. Particularly they're serving early. What a record. Four straight national semifinals had never been done during all the years of tremendous success at the University of Nebraska. 20 and 1 in the NCAA tournament. 51 and 2 for Fecky and Maloney in the months of November and December. Match point for the defending champions. Good lineup. You've got Fecky, Sweet, and Stiverins up front. And Maloney, obviously a wonderful defender and a very, very good server. they got to be thinking Quaid all the way. Absolutely. Illinois can do this, but they have to. they got to get it done here. Quaid down the line, dug by Hames. Fecky, Nebraska comes back from two sets down. What a performance by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Struggling, Illinois giving them not only a lot, but more than they wanted through the first couple of sets. And then Nebraska, remember the third card, 25-23. Then Nebraska again, 25-20. And then that big reversal on the touch to give Nebraska the 13-11 advantage. And Michaela Fecky closes it out, closes it out with her 19th kill. She was really struggling early, but look at where she finishes. Hitting 306, Nebraska in the championship for the ninth time. The two winningest programs of all time in terms of match wins will play on Saturday for the championship. Celebration or relief? Both. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wonderful season for Illinois. Tremendous career for number one, Jordan Poulter, Ali Bastianelli. To the national semifinals, let's go to Holly Rowe. What a night. Michaela Fecky, your team had your backs against the wall. Down in the third set, you had to rally back. What were the moments that pulled your group together and how did you survive? I think our connection with one another really pulled us together tonight. And we wanted to fight. We didn't want this to be our last game. And, you know, we're really excited. Right before the fifth set, you had your arms around everybody, hands in the air, touching each other, and you asked everybody to take a deep breath. How did your leadership in that moment help you guys find some confidence in that fifth set? 
yeah, we always try to go back to the zone, and the zone is where we are our best, and so taking a deep breath usually gets us there, and sometimes I have to remind them to calm down a little bit. <laughs> You guys were not calm after the end. That dog pile in the semifinal was like your dog pile in the national championship last year. How relieved were you to, to survive in advance? Honestly, I'm so proud of my teammates. I mean, it reminds me kind of of last year playing Penn State, and um, you know, we definitely couldn't have done it without each other, and everyone pulled together and fought really hard. So now for the third time in your career, you're onto the championship match. What is going to be important as you face a big Stanford team? I think the biggest thing is just going to be coming together and playing as a team in one unit. All right. They call you Miss December. I think it's continuing the streak. Thanks, Michaela. Thank you. Congratulations to Nebraska. And the theme all season long has been we over me. And it took all of the we you could possibly muster for Nebraska to pull this one out against a very, very tough team from Illinois. So the championship is set. A number one seed, Stanford. Let's take a look at champion or I should say match point once again <laughs> Illinois was not going to let this one go quietly and how appropriate Michaela Fecky over the top of the block and down to close things out let's go back to Holly Rowe well coach I think you have a saying in your program every day Michaela Fecky I think every day she has shown up for you here in the NCAA tournament. How did she kind of help take that match over and keep your team steady? You know, uh, I, we talked about her inner confidence, you know, and even though we were down 0-2, she just kept telling them, like, you guys, we're, we're going to win this. And she's been that way her whole career. She believes and she makes plays and she, nothing, nothing bothers her. You have a freshman as a setter for the first time in Nebraska history, yeah. and yet that kid out here critical dig critical ace how has she shown up for you well i was about ready to wring her neck the first two games but <laughs> she's she's really settled in and did a great job and uh you know we recruited her to be the setter here her freshman year replacing kelly that is not an easy thing and uh she's a great competitor and you, you guys saw it tonight I wondered early in this match if there was pressure to repeat and now you find yourself in the championship against a good stanford team do you, do you absorb that pressure at all? No. Um, this match tonight, we knew it was going to, I mean, I knew it was going to be a five-gamer. And this is this is Big Ten, baby. It's like this every week in the Big Ten. These five gamers back and forth. And, you know, Illinois is a great team. They've got great players. And this, this is a really big win for us. But this is, like I said, it's the Big Ten. And now we'll uh, rest up and get ready for Stanford. All right. We'll see you on Saturday, Coach. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Thanks. Thank you, Holly. Congratulations to John Cook. Into the championship match once again. Well, the conversation, of course, boils down to now there are only two. We started a couple of weeks ago with 64. Your thoughts looking forward to Stanford and Nebraska. Stanford, they have that group that won two years ago, led by player of the year last year, possible player of the year this year, Michaela Fecky. Uh, sorry, uh, Catherine Plummer against Michaela Fecky and her crew. What a great final this should be. Yeah, indeed. The two winningest programs in the history of college volleyball going at one another on Saturday night. Thanks so much for joining us here in Minneapolis as the national semifinals came back to Minneapolis for the first time in 30 years. Once again, our final score, Nebraska, three sets to two over Illinois. Coming up next is Sports Center. Be sure to join us on Saturday, as I just mentioned, 9 Eastern on ESPN2 for the national championship between Stanford and Nebraska. For Karch, I'm Paul. Good night from the Twin Cities.